Adesanya names the lowest moment of his MMA career. Adesanya has successfully defended the belt five times, establishing himself as one of UFC's most dominant and longest reigning champions. Although he has maintained a strong hold on the middleweight belt, his professional record has not remained unblemished since Jan Blahovich defeated him. However, Adesanya has mentioned that one of the lowest moments in his career was not in his loss to Jan. His lowest point was in his fight against Romero, when his fans turned against him. It's not the Jan fight, surprisingly. Actually, it wasn't the Jan fight, Adesanya said on his YouTube channel. If I'm being honest, the Romero fight. That was the first time people were like, aw, boring. After that that I was like, I was fighting. He was just standing there. Why are you blaming me, he said. The fans turned on me in a way. And I was like, what? Now they're saying I'm shit. What's the lowest point in MMA for you? In MMA? Ooh, yeah. that's a good question. No, no, that's actually a good question. Lowest point in MMA? It's not the Yan fight, surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't the Yan fight, because people expected like, yeah. Oh, it's gonna be like I was like, nah, nah, yeah, I'm fine. You know, like I said, dare to be great. Lowest point in MMA. Hold up. If I'm being honest, the Romero fight. Great, good job, great, great, great. So there it is, Israel Adesanya and Yoel Romero. They go the 25 minute distance. Because that was the first time when people were just like, oh, like, boring, yeah, like exactly, whatever. Yeah. Son, yeah, yeah. Because like. And like, he had another fight after me, and he did the same thing. Dude, look at Yoel. Look at Yoel, man. I'm telling you, it's like, look, what's he doing? Look at Yoel. The smart people were like, oh, Israel was right. He's doing the exact same thing, because he knew if he made a move against me the wrong way, I was going to catch him. Bits of it still raise his ugly head, but I squash it now because I'm an adult and I know how to handle it. But after that fight, I was like, but I was fighting. I was trying to, he, he was just standing there. Why are you blaming me? That's why this now, I'm just like, eh, whatever. And I talk to George about it, I'm like, eh, whatever. I know what I'm going to do. Yeah, but, yeah it's just something that's just still hard to control it when, it, yep. when it's happening, right? But that was my first time I kind of mm. like felt like, Ugh, I hate it, but the fans turned on me in a way. When I was like, wait, what? They're, now they're saying I'm shit. I'm like, Chell Sonnen is not happy with Ferguson versus Jing Liang matchup. Sonnen has confessed his displeasure over the announcement of the fight between former interim lightweight champion Tony Ferguson and welterweight veteran Li Jingliang at UFC 279. You want to talk about Charles Oliveira, and you want to talk about what a big star he is. They say that him versus Gaishi was the biggest pay-per-view of the year, not to mention this year had the heavyweight fight between the champion and the undisputed, and you're still telling me that Oliveira Gishi was number one. Oliveira doesn't exist, that belt doesn't exist, and the story doesn't exist, if Tony Ferguson, who was up in the loft, had not dropped the ladder down so that Oliveira could climb up it. Now we're going to bring Ferguson back, great story, he's hanging in there, he's traded camps, he's doing things different, and you're giving him I don't know of Leech. I don't know if that's his nickname, or that's his name, and I'm not trying to be a dick. I assume you call a guy a Leech, like he claims to be, I haven't the foddiest idea who we've got opposite Tommy Ferguson, or how we're supposed to pretend that that matters. In the history of my life, you are correct, but you want to talk about Charles Oliveira and you want to talk about what a big star is. They say that him versus Gage was the biggest pay-per-view of the year, not to mention this year, had the heavyweight fight between the champion and the undisputed, I mean, Warrior uh, versus Hogan, and you're still telling me that Oliveira Gage was number one? Oliveira doesn't exist. That belt doesn't exist, and the story doesn't exist. If Tony Ferguson, who was up in the loft, had not dropped the ladder down so that Oliveira could climb up, and now we're going to bring Ferguson back. Great story. He's hanging in there. He's trade camps. He's doing things different, and you're giving him. I don't know if Leech, I don't know if that's his nickname or that's his name, and I'm not trying to be a dick. I assume you call a guy a Leech like he clings to people. Mm -hmm. I assume. I, I have the foggiest idea how we got opposite Tony Ferguson or how we're supposed to pretend that that matters. Alexander Volkanovsky warns Paddy Pimblett not to gain much weight between fights. Pimblett has been joking about how much he likes to eat junk food and gain up to 200 pounds. Despite this, Paddy the Batty manages to drop weight before every fight and compete in the lightweight division. As a featherweight champion and former rugby player over 200 pounds, Volkanovsky feels more than qualified to advise Pimblett. Volkanovsky warned Pimblett about the dangers of overeating and the consequences it could bring to his health if Pimblet doesn't start taking his weight more seriously. It's not healthy. It's terrible for you. It blows my mind how his head just balloons like that. It's quite funny.
cards and I don't know I don't just know that. I used to do that. Oh you like back back in the days when you used to talk to me when I would go you know people see me win a, uh, the PXC world title featherweight. I'll go back to Thailand not even two weeks later and like people are looking at me like how do you look like that? Like you know what I mean like, you were just here like what it doesn't make sense. Um and like yeah so I, I know this because I used to weigh in at 65.8 145 and within the week the week so next weekend 86 kilograms that's that's over 185 kilograms and you used to see that what's that like that's yeah 185 right 85 86 kg it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, well over, sorry. Yeah, it's well it's over. It's one, like, it's it's almost 190. So I used to go 158, well, yeah, one, sorry, 145 to 190 in one week. So uh, I, I, yeah, and it's not healthy. It's terrible. It's terrible for you, you know what I mean? And like, yeah, mate, his head, I just kind of blows me out how his head just balloons like that. It's, it's just quite funny. Nate Diaz gets high as USADA holds him captive for his urine. USADA held Nate Diaz captive in his own house because he couldn't provide enough urine for the drug test. After the USADA agent showed up, Nate proceeded to get high in front of him and tried to persuade him to smoke with him. Unfortunately, the agent refused his offer. This man, this man won't get out of my house because I didn't give him enough piss. I pissed all I can, my nigga. <laughs> How many liters do I got enough? Liters? Two more. I got two more liters of piss I gotta give him and he won't get out of here until... <coughs> DK my guy, but you saw him fucking suck a dick. Come back in six hours, I'll give you two more... Two more what, liters? Milliliters? Little liters? Sorry, DK. Why is that? Daniel Cormier labels Hamzat Chimay a biggest loser following UFC 278 fallout. UFC commentator Daniel Cormier said Chimaev was the biggest loser last weekend at UFC 279 after his title outlook was shuffled around in mere seconds. I think last weekend he did not understand that he was the biggest loser in the Usman vs. Leon situation because he was in line, said Cormier. All he had to do was get past Diaz. All he had to do, get past Diaz, you fight for the championship, but with Leon Edwards winning now, now we got a trilogy and rightfully so. That leads to the question, what is this fight for? I feel like for Diaz, this fight's for legacy. I feel like for Chimaev, this is just another scalp on his resume, because I don't know if this win necessarily puts him closer than he already is to a championship fight. And, because of the result last weekend, He'll need one more. I just wonder who that one more is going to come against. If he beats Diaz, does he get Covington next? Aljamain Sterling dishes on TJ Dillashaw. The showdown between the reigning bantamweight champion and Dillashaw, who will make his second walk to the octagon since a two-year suspension, has all fans excited. Despite this, Sterling believes Dillashaw's history of PED use needs to be better emphasized by MMA media and the fans. During an interview with Oscar Willis, Sterling referenced Cody Gartrand's past accusations of Dillashaw as the beginning of the PED talk. The difference between Peter Yawn and TJ Dillashaw. TJ was confirmed years ago that he was cheating. But I'm not gonna be a whistleblower because I don't have the facts, I don't have the evidence. Cody said it at the press conference, and everyone was just brushing around, and I'm just like you guys are the media. Why aren't you talking about this? He literally told you this guy has been cheating, and he showed everyone how. The bad blood between these two fighters will take center stage during the UFC 280 event in Abu Dhabi. However, the back and forth regarding Dillashaw's controversy is just getting started to heat up. Conor McGregor released a video with possible sexual innuendo, and fans erupted. McGregor has been vacationing on his luxury yacht enjoying his time away from the octagon. But recently, 
McGregor fans have gone wild after the Irishman posted what appeared to be a video of the UFC star receiving oral sex on his yacht. McGregor has not fought since breaking his leg against Dustin Poirier last July and has yet to return to full training. However, he has been seen kicking with his injured leg. So we may see him come back in 2023. But what do you think about McGregor's physical condition? Do you think he'll be able to bounce back from his losing streak and return to his old self? We'll be reading you in the comments. This is it for today, folks. If you want to know the latest UFC news, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications bell, and click the like button so you don't miss any details about the upcoming fights. Thanks for watching. See you soon.